DAV ozone injections, how to prevent damaged veins. Hi everyone, here's Paula, the crazy ozone lady, and in this video I will talk about DAV ozone injections. So this is another installment in my, in my DAV ozone series. So for anyone who is new to DAV ozone treatments, uh, so DAV ozone treatments, this is the intravenous injection direct intravenous injection of ozone oxygen gas. So this is a little bit controversial and some people are scared of this and there are some risks, but uh, when this procedure is performed correctly and safely, then this is actually one of the safest ozone methods there is. And so, but today I want to talk about something that is actually not rare when it comes to DIV ozone injections, and that is phlebitis or inflammation of the vein. So this is something that happens quite often with DIV ozone injections. And of course, an inflammation of the vein is a problem because if the vein is getting inflamed regularly, then what this will cause is a sclerosing of the vein. So the vein can actually close up and collapse and it may become very, very difficult to inject it in the future. So, and this is of course a problem if you are treating yourself in order to treat an ongoing problem and if you're relying on the DIV ozone injections to stay healthy and to stay functional, then you do not want to damage your veins. But if you're treating varicose veins, then actually you may want to trigger an inflammation because in that uh, situation, the inflammation has a therapeutical value because after the uh, inflammation heals up, then the bulging of the vein disappears and the discoloration. So when you're treating varicose veins, then actually phlebitis is something desirable. But if you're injecting yourself for therapeutical purposes because you're treating some chronic health problem, then you, of course, do not want to risk phlebitis. So there are a few tips and tricks what to do in order to prevent phlebitis and uh, what one can do that when phlebitis occurs, uh, what, what to do, um, yeah, how to, how to make it that the vein will heal faster and um, how to make it so that the vein will not be damaged. So I will uh, present here in this video some, some of those tips and tricks. Now, some of them I have used in my practice, on my patients, on myself. And so this is a true and tested method. And other tips and tricks I have taken from Facebook members. One in particular, I'm not sure I'm, uh, I have the permission to name him, so I won't, but he probably knows uh, who he is. All right, so let's begin. So um, I present, I um, prepared here this little presentation. So how to prevent damaged veins with DAV ozone injections. So the most important part is to use low ozone concentrations. And I suggest to not go higher than uh, 20 to 35 micrograms per milliliter. So I do not think that it is necessary to go as high as 55 micrograms per milliliter, which is something that Dr. Robbins recommends. And uh, I made a video explaining why I don't think that this is necessary. And Dr. Rowan appears to agree with me since from what I am hearing, he's also using concentrations in the 30s. So, well, Dr. Rowan does not use DIV ozone injections as often as Dr. Robbins, from what I understand, uh, but uh, he does use them every now and then, and he says that he sees the same effects when he uses concentrations of around 30s without seeing the occurrence of phlebitis as often as one would see with higher concentrations. So yes, I, I think this is the most important part, use low ozone concentrations. The second point is to rotate veins. So it is good to have several veins and you can really be quite creative when it comes to, to veins. So you can really inject any vein that, that you can find. So you can, of course, now those veins here, 
on the inside of the elbows. Those are the most common ones and those are some of the best veins. Uh, but you can also use, uh, some people have veins, um, like prominent veins here on the wrists, on top of the wrists. Some even inject uh, the veins here uh, on the back of their hands. There's also a vein that some people sometimes have, uh, which, which goes here at the back of, uh, of the arm. This can be injected as well. You can also inject veins on your legs. If you have varicose veins, use those. Some people even inject veins on their feet. Now, but here's the thing. So some veins, they may look nice and plump and thick, but they are, are actually tricky to inject because they're rolling veins. So they actually tend to move when you try to inject them. It's actually pretty difficult to, to puncture them. But there are certain tricks, and this may be another video, uh, how to inject difficult uh, veins. But in general, like any vein that you see, you can inject it. But if you choose to inject veins on your feet, then you need to also respect the same safety precautions as you would inject any other vein. So you also need to be sure that you're stretched out, that your body is not kinked, and so that the blood circulation is not obstructed. So when you're injecting your feet, uh, you need to find a position where uh, where your body is relaxed and all your limbs are stretched out. Um, okay, so let's continue with the pre presentation. So yes, rotate veins. So um, yeah, so you can find different veins, so it is good to inject a new vein each time. So if you're performing DIVOs injections every day, then it makes sense to inject a different vein um, every day. Next point is don't inject inflamed veins. So if you see that the vein is inflamed, so how do you know that the vein is inflamed? You see it when the vein is red, when it's painful and hard. This is how you see that, okay, there is phlebitis going on. So if the vein is already inflamed, don't inject it. So you want the vein to heal up. You want it to rest. And only then can you inject it again. Another trick. So this is something that Dr. Robbins suggests to his patients to load up on vitamin C. And it appears that this is how Dr. Robbins achieves a relatively low rate of people uh, with damaged veins, from what I understand. Um, I'm not sure, but th this appears to be so, although there are still reports in the Facebook group of people who have had, who have received those ozone injections, even with the vitamin C and uh, still um, developed sclerosed veins. But in general, if you will take a lot of vitamin C, so what you can do, you can basically dissolve vitamin C powder and you can keep drinking it throughout the day. Uh, what this will do, it will counteract some of the effect of the ozone. And this is, of course, a trade-off. So what this will do is that the risk for you of um, uh, developing phlebitis uh, will be, of course, lower when you have loaded up on vitamin C. But at the same time, you have to expect that the therapeutical value of ozone will be reduced as well because vitamin C as an antioxidant and as, I, as an antagonist to ozone can actually reduce and eliminate some of the effect of ozone injections. So it's a trade-off, but uh, you know this is something that everyone has to decide for themselves because uh, it may be worth it for you to have a little lesser effect from the ozone, but then being able to continue with the injections for a longer time. Another option is for those who are not opposed to drugs is to take non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs like, for example, ibuprofen and aspirin, and those can also help you with phlebitis. So this is actually the conventional method. This is when you look it up. And uh, when you Google it, what to do uh, for phlebitis, then this is actually what, what doctors, what medical doctors uh, recommend to take uh, anti-inflammatory drugs. 
Now, this is something that has been uh, suggested in Facebook groups, but, but I believe that also Dr. Rowan suggests uh, this, to take proteolytic enzymes like serapeptase, bromelain, and netokinase. So those enzymes, I believe all of them, or maybe some of them are a combination of those enzymes, they are uh, supposed to reduce scar tissue. So it is possible that they can also reduce, that they can heal sclerosed veins. Uh, I have no personal experience with this, and um, but it's possible that it works. So try it out. Those are you don't need a prescription to buy those enzymes. They're relatively low risk, although I know that netokinase it can lead to a um, anti coagulative effect in some people from what I'm hearing. So that basically their blood uh, seems to become less, um, it basically becomes, uh, it, it has an effect like heparin, like an anticoagulant. But I think this is in a very small percentage of the population. Uh, but in general, enzymes are very low risk. So this is definitely worth a try. Other options are topical solutions. So you can apply vitamin E oil or Arnica cream, Voltaren gel, cold compresses immediately after, but warm and moist heat a day after the phlebitis occurs. So this is another thing that has been suggested in a Facebook group. Uh, Arnica cream, uh, this is actually pretty um, popular here where I am. And uh, I used to recommend this to patients uh, where I did a certain cosmetic procedure which led to an inflammation of the skin. And so I recommended to patients Arnica cream, but I have to say I saw only a hit and miss results. So some people claim they have uh, seen a reduction in the inflammation, others say no. Uh, but again, this is a low risk. Uh, it has as good no, as no side effects. This is a, a natural compound, Arnica. So, um, you know, it, the worst that can happen is that it will not work. And the same with the vitamin E oil and cold compresses. And I think Voltaren gel is the same thing. This is low risk, but it could possibly help. Another thing that has been suggested by a member and a patient of Dr. Robbins, this is infrared light. So this person, he had actually a custom built infrared lamp that he applied around his arm after each DAV ozone injection. And he says that he did not develop any phlebitis and his vein remained healthy and strong throughout the series of DFV ozone treatments that he received. And infrared light, apparently it is known to stimulate collagen production. So, so this may be a good idea to try. <clears throat> Another thing to prevent um, veins from collapsing is to work out, to pump iron, to to do push-ups, so to really work those muscles and to develop lean muscles, because this is when the veins will pop out. So we know the images of bodybuilders with those really pronounced uh, veins. So this is this is also a good solution to both prevent uh, sclerosis veins, and if they collapse, then it's possible that. Uh, just through working out, through building muscle, uh, then may be possible to bring them back. Another thing, this may be an urban myth, I'm not sure, is to drink either lemon juice or lime juice, but maybe it has a similar effect like uh, just vitamin C, but uh, it maybe it could help um, also heal the veins after they have become inflamed. So again, this is another low risk thing that one can try. So those are the solutions. So yes, so phlebitis, it is not rare. It, it, it occurs quite often with DIV ozone injections because it is an, an irritation of the vein and the higher the ozone concentration is then of course the higher the risk of developing 
uh, an inflammation. So I think really the most important part is to keep the um, ozone concentration low. So if you keep to this, then you will already significantly reduce the risk of phlebitis. So that was it for this live stream. Check out the description below the video. There may be some interesting things going on. And I also update the descriptions every now and then. So if you're a DAD ozone aficionado, there may be something there for you. And also subscribe to my newsletter. This is the only weapon that we have against big tech thought police, because who knows how long this channel will be allowed to stay up. So yeah, subscribe to my channel. Go eat a steak. I had some chicken today just to mix it up. It was delicious. I put it in the oven for two hours. It was like falling off the bone, really nice with some marjoram on top. And see you in the next video. And of course, as usual, do not mistake this as medical advice. This is not to be misunderstood as medical advice. If you're sick, go see a doctor. Bye bye.